Today is a day of closure. Not in the sense that we're closing down shop, but that we will be reviewing the fourth and final cigar that we scored from Dapper Cigar Company at the 2023 PCA trade show. That's not to say that we're going to quit stocking Dapper cigars or bringing in new cigars from Dapper Cigar Company. It's just that this is the last of the four that we decided to pop into our portfolio uh, from that show. So let's get to it, shall we? Our grand finale Dapper Cigar Company smoke is the Siempre Rosado in Robusto form. This stubby little smoke is an Ibano Ecuadorian Rosado wrapper, go figure, as well as Alapa region Nicaraguan binder inside, and then a blend of fillers from the USA and Nicaragua. It is rolled down in Nicaragua as well, like every other Dapper Cigar Company smoke, and that means it's an NACSA product. Dapper's website markets this cigar as full, 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 full flavor, full strength, full body, full of everything you want if you like a stout cigar. And I do like a stout cigar and I'm in the mood for one today, hence me reviewing it. Appearance-wise, well, it's well rolled like all other Dapper cigars I've had on any soft spots and it's very firmly packed, but it's got some modeling as you see here and there. So there are little spots of discoloration throughout the duration of that barrel. However, the actual barrel itself is, uh, you know, very tidy, not a lot of bulging seams, and, you know, there's some veins, whatnot, here and there, and a slight sheen to the cigar, but, um, yeah, it's not the most appealing-looking dapper cigar I have smoked, which, well, is a little bit of a disappointment to me. On the upside, though, the banding continues to kick ass. I mean, just look at this beauty. Oh, man. I sure do love me some Dapper banding. And branding, for that matter. And while Dapper's marketing screams full, 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 the smell of the foot and barrel are pretty subdued. It's got some stony darkness to it and earthen tones, likely from that broadleaf USA filler inside, but it's not a very spicy smelling foot. Barrel has a little bit of, you know, peppery spice to it, more black pepper than white pepper, but it's just more cedary and a little sweet. So a little bit uh, deceiving uh, so far. And for the sake of transparency, it is worth noting that I have smoked one of these before, almost immediately after the PCA trade show, and it kind of bowled me over. It was pretty stout in the nicotine department, and it wasn't like I was about to take a nap or anything after smoking it and lie down, but it definitely made me feel a little woozy. So I will be drinking ice water to start with well, and just see how it goes. If it proves to be too potent, though, man, I'm upgrading to like a ginger ale or something stronger. I'm all over the place. Hmm, intriguing. Whereas unlit aromas are more dark and a little bit sweeter smelling, not much, but just a little bit, cold pulls on the cigar are very dry and very nutty. And there's a little bit of a peppery tingle toward the back, but mm, a little vanilla too. This is not what I was expecting at all. So let's get a little deeper and fire it up. Cigar calms down pretty quickly uh, after you, know, you light it up. And I'm glad that I used the cedar spill to fire this sucker up because it added a little bit of additional cedar-like woodiness to the start of the cigar and probably overpowered any you know, really strong peppery flavors that oftentimes full cigars um, provide when you light them up. This returns a nice little you know cedar flavor, but as that dies back and my palate adjusts a bit, picking up more of a, almost like a sweet, 
low, like a loaf of bread flavor, uh, like a sweet bread, um, like a molasses bread like taste without it being overly molasses. Again, think molasses bread, not the actual syrup itself. And behind that comes a mineral taste, um, just a generic mineral flavor. Uh, sometimes, you know, you drink, you know, spring water from, you know, a mountain spring somewhere, you know, if you're up in you know, Colorado or the Alps or wherever you may be. And sometimes there's, you know, there's some random types of, you know, deposits that are in the water. So it's still clean, but you're getting these mineral tastes. It's not salty at all, but that's interesting because with the molasses bread doughiness, it kind of works. Whew. No more than 10 minutes into the cigar and it is already packing you out with pepper a lot of black pepper dash of white pepper even a spare dried jalapeno seed somewhere in there like this is a this is definitely a strong cigar and in a good way uh, it's not overpowering but you mean one <laughs> smoker be warned right but i'm enjoying this and i'm glad that i'm pairing it with water because i'm really able to detect far more in this cigar than I did the first time. And as with all dapper cigars, they are draw tested. So the draw has been great. They always are. And the ash, of course, is Stella. So let's see what we can uh, get from here. huh? Yeah, that molasses doughy breadiness that I detected within the you know first 20 minutes of the cigar has moved into a multi-grain-like flavor. Still some sweetness there, but it's kind of a just a generic sweetness that lingers behind after you exhale. And with that doughy, multi-grain bready flavor, you do get a little bit of you know rye-like spice to go with it. But the strength of the pepper notes are one of the more defining attributes of the cigar. But here in the first third, almost to the second third, I'm getting a sweet leathery note and it's complemented by this very unique strength that I want to attribute to the wrapper or that binder, but it could be also that the filler leaf in the cigar is an oliva product, at least the stuff from Nicaragua. And apparently this is a virgin crop. So it's a first run for oliva and has never been utilized in a blend before. So I get a feeling that some of this strength is stemming from that filler. The leathery notes on the cigar at the center of it are the prominent feature and it dries out a bit on you. Uh, not the actual structural side of the cigar, but the flavor profile. It still is very full in body and full in strength and full in flavor, but it's not nearly as sweet as earlier, which is why I have switched over to a root beer, which here in Japan is a bit of a rarity. So uh, this uh, $30 can of root beer is a bit of a specialty. I'm joking, it's not 30 bucks, but it is pricey compared to what you get in America, especially considering it's a &W. Notice that as I go through this smoke again, that it still has a distinct nuttiness toward the center and the final third of the cigar that really goes with the leather notes and goes well at that. There are some other undertones. It's still, you know, a little bit on the you know peppery end, but it's mellowing out or becoming more round and balanced at this point. So it's a lot smoother than it was in the first third. And there's also a gradual shift within the cigar to a little bit more of a fruity flavor, uh, more of a just a dark dried fruit note. Uh, not so much on, you know, fig or raisin or anything like that. Just, you know, maybe like a little bit of a dried cherry taste. And it burns incredibly cool. It's just, well, a 
dapper cigar. <laughs> and when I say that a dapper cigar is meticulously hand rolled and crafted and pressed for that matter, this is what I mean. Just look at how the filler is constructed. You can see the blend through and through. And I bet that dark spot right in the center is that smack of U.S. broadleaf. However, there is an undisclosed American filler leaf in there as well. So maybe there's something darker at play and we just don't know it. Either way, man, what a well-constructed smoke. Whoop, whoops. Mm -hmm. The final third's cigar flavor profile kind of returns you to those tastes that you detect at the very start of the cigar. And that means more of those mineral rich, earthy notes. But you still have that nuttiness that's present. And at this point, it goes from kind of a generic nut flavor to a distinctly dry pecan taste. This is not a very sweet cigar at all. And the pepperiness lingers, but at this point, it's almost only detectable via, you know, retrohale through the nostrils. And there is this, it's like, again, dry, woody taste, which is a generic wood flavor. It's not really cedar or oak or anything like that. You just kind of have some dry wood tannin taste. This is a very, I wouldn't say mild, but lighter way to close out the cigar. Curious to see if that does transition though at all as we approach parting puffs here in a moment. It's parting puffs time. And that means assessing everything, which at this point in parting puffs means talking about the dryness of the cigar. Because where it's very round in body and mouthfeel, and the finish is very long and very filled, very much filled with you know dark walnut notes and some of dried pecan and dry woodiness. It leaves your palate feeling very dry. My tongue just dries out. So if you smoke one of these, I highly recommend leaning toward a sweeter, stickier beverage. Again, root beer, if you're a fan of root beer, it seems to be working quite well with this blend. Um, or if you're into bourbon or, you know, dark rums or scotch whiskey, things like that would probably pair up very well with this cigar. Construction, well, it's a dapper cigar. On point, five stars for construction, for sure. Uh, there was one bit of a drop dash in the first third, but outside of that, it has burned super straight, super clean, and super delicious. Um, and while I do wish that it was a little bit sweeter, especially here in the final third and parting puffs area, I don't find myself saying, man, I got to ding it a bunch for that. It's just finishing on a drier note. That's why I'm going to give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Very nice. Very good if you like full. It's not the most complex full-strength, full-bodied cigars that we have in our car portfolio, but neither is it a wimp in any regard either. Um, it just is what it is, and that is okay with me. So this is Micah with the Dapper Siempre Rosado in all of its macho form, and uh, we'll catch you on the next review. Cheers.